Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. Sandra Schmerler, Colleen, do you really, I thought you got your internet. <laughs> I don't want to mess you up too much. I was just playing with you. <laughs> Well, it's Sandra Schmerler Day, an important day for so many people. I'm thrilled about this, Colleen. I know you're thrilled about this. Some wicked curling action earlier today. I mean, let's get right into it. Which one? PEI has a game in the bag. Six points in the last two ends by Quebec. What did you see? They steal the win, and that is what is happening at this year's Scotties. Uh, well, you know, remember we talked about that the other day when she kind of had Houdini win against um, Anderson, and I said often that'll even out. Well, today was the even out. So the collapse of it was a little bit frightening because giving up the four in the ninth end where it was a real team effort to give up that four. They kind of made a dubious call. It usually Brisbane. is, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And then in the ninth end, remember we talked a little bit about on this ice, sometimes if you set it, it's no good. Sometimes if you give a bad handle, I'm just going to grab my rock. Okay. I have to have one. So this is, and this on, is what it gets right here, Skipper. You're going to talk about a lazy handle, I think. Yeah, a lazy. And when Suzanne Burt let that intern go, it was like, like that. And what, happens, than, what happens when you do that? It just curls too much. And so she crashed that rock of uh, St. Georges. And, and even Quebec made a few dubious calls down the stretch too. Um, it wasn't necessarily a pretty win, but I did like watching young St. Georges is it, I mean, is it, it in the ninth end and fun. then make the shot she called in the 10th. So that's she, one that got away from Bert. And it, that's those are the games that come back to haunt she, you. Uh, St. George, uh, she seems to be soaking up the spotlight. I mean, she's having so much fun out there. Wow. Um, she, Ilsa from Frozen, the movie, is she not? Like, she's just, or Game of Thrones. Like, yeah, she's beautiful. She's young. It's great to see. Uh, and But most importantly, uh, her shot making is, is pretty epic. And this team you know, let's do this in five years' time because this team is sort of a team of the future. They're young and talented. Uh, Chelsea Carey, Team Flurry. I think we should call them Team Flurry from here we are on. Now, from now on, they're Team Flurry to us. They um, are on a roll, aren't they? 3-0. and oh, And you and I talked about it and everyone was talking about it. How are they going to be able to communicate? Chelsea seems so loose on the opening show when we had her on. She did. Oh, looks great. I think the secret to life in curling is to stay loose. And, you know, since we're attributing Sandra Schmirler today, she really had a great ability on the ice hmm. of, of, yes, um, tension. And yet you could see, always see the joy and carefreeness, is that a word, in her eyes. Now. <laughs> and I think that's what always shone through. She was happy to be here. And, you know, Carrie kind of, Chelsea kind of alluded to that the other night. After not curling, she kind of realized, I want to be back out there. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity for her after, as Ben Hebert said, she was sort of left on the sidelines after her team left her. I yeah. love what Ben said. She nasty. said, nasty curling. So there's a new expression for Devin to add to his buckle up, roll call, and all the other things. The plants are gone. <laughs> and nasty. Which is a good thing. Some people were asking me on Twitter. Nasty is a good thing. Uh, listen, a jam-packed show tonight. Uh, we set it off the top. It is Sandra Schmirler Day. I'm wearing my Saskatchewan colors, born and raised in the Wheat Province. And Sandra said, had such a profound effect on my life. Mm -hmm. But before we get into that, mm -hmm. Jennifer Jones. We've got the star herself. Six-time Scotty's champ, along with you, call. 14-5 victory today after a tough game last night. Don't get Jenny Jones mad because she comes back with vengeance. It's her 152nd win. And, and Colleen, I think right now we're going to go back to her first ever Scotty's title. Oh, this is such, I was in St. John's at the time. What an amazing shot. We're still talking about it all these years later. Let's watch. A most difficult attempt. Yeah. Trying to come in oh, off a yeah. of stone on the outside trying to get the roll to the stone at the button. They're working on it frantically. There's the contact, there's the roll, she's made it! What a shot for the win! 
That is the best shot I've ever seen to win a game. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And you have to feel for that Ontario team who had thought they had sealed it up. Oh, I'm jumping. Jennifer, <laughs> can I give you goosebumps? A a absolutely. I almost want to cry every time I see it. So <laughs> it's so fun to be able to oh. see it again. I do. I put myself right back there. I was standing behind your sheet, so I even I put myself right back there because it was like, this is a tough shot. This is tough. Wait a minute, she's gonna make it. She's gonna make it. What was going through your head? Did you? I mean, I know you knew uh, you've been asked it a thousand times, but now that you've just seen it again, relive it for us. Yeah, you know what? Honestly, like I just remember everything about it. The crowd was like kind of bustling, and then all of a sudden, I turned the rock over and it went dead silent. And I remember that. It was like, but that's what dreams are made of, right? Like that big moment of, of what I had always dreamed of to be in a, in a Scotty's final and then to have a shot to win. And I remember the last thing I said to myself actually before I let it go was here goes nothing. <laughs> 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 you don't really have a, a lot of uh, cho choice uh, in this in the moment. And I let it go and I thought this is going to be close. And at the second hog line, I thought we're going to hit it perfectly. And it was just a question of whether it had enough weight and yeah. I remember I kind of go to celebrate and then I'm like, wait till everything happens. And then it, it was, I thought my whole body was going to explode from the adrenaline. It was really, really fun. Yeah. Jen, um, just on the point of fans, cause I know you love them and you feed yeah. off them and now you've got none of them. How has that been so far to generate your own excitement out there? It's definitely a little bit different. That, that to me is the biggest change about curling here. It's not the hotel. It's not the bubble. It's not going out for dinner. It's, it's that you're when you're curling, it's just so quiet. Like you can hear what everybody's saying on every every sheet, like even if they're just having a conversation, which is so different. And it does add to the experience for sure, like having fans and people cheering or going, ooh, when you miss a shot. And uh, but at, at the end of the day, we're just very thankful to be here and very grateful for the opportunity to play. So it's exciting. We're having a ton of fun, even though there's no fan. Yeah, but you bring up a really good point because in, there's no other sport like curling, is there? where the fans are intimately connected to the curlers. They feel they know you, they come and talk to you after the game. And that's sort of not, it's, it's becomes this relationship. It's what formed this show is the idea that curling fans are passionate, so. Yeah, it, it, and it, you feel like there's some that come every year and you get to reconnect with them. It's almost like you're reconnecting with, with some family in a way and like the media, we don't even get to see you guys. And so that it's, it's almost like this reunion at the Scotties where you get to see people that you wouldn't, normally see throughout the year so that part is a little bit different for sure and it just yeah like I said even on a miss you know sometimes you know you throw a bad one and you're like wait for it wait for it Ooh, the crowd goes as you miss it. <laughs> but or or when you make a good one Jocelyn made a great shot the other day and it was so quiet and it, that's when I really realized that uh, you that want you want to jump up and celebrate I'm sure mm. yeah we're going to try to clap for ourselves so that's what we're that's what we're gonna do. Hopefully, there's lots for us to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Now, Jen, I mean, as if watching back when you won your first Scotties, giving us all goosebumps again, wasn't enough of excitement. Devin, what do we have next for Jen? Well, well I mean, here here's the thing, uh, Jen. You're in the bubble, and I know how much you've been missing the family. We have a video because I know how much you're missing Bella and Skyla. Let's show a video from a few years ago mm -hmm. around Mother's Day. Uh, how much they mean to you and how much your mom means They're to so me. They're so cute. Take a look at that. And I sit here thinking about Mother's Day with my two beautiful girls. I can't help but think how much they brought to my life and the perspective they've given me. No matter what, win or lose, I get to come home to my family. And as Bella once told me after a big loss, she said, it's okay, mom, you won lots of games. And she's she's right. And I can only hope that they've learned along the way that I want them to reach for the stars chase their dreams, but most importantly, have fun along the way. Isn't that what I tell you? Happy Mother's Day. Okay. So, I know. So, 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 so My babies. I, I know you're missing the girls because you're at the Scotties and they, they would be there and they'd be meeting you. I mean, we've seen this how many times, but I also know that this is your first Scotties without mom, Carol, being there. And I know how much she has meant to you over all of these years, uh, your biggest fan, your biggest cheerleader throughout all of there's there's all the moms of mm -hmm. course who lost jaw last year, um, and just just an incredible bond uh, between you guys. Um, and I know she's meant so much to you, and and maybe just talk to me about that about that bond. You didn't tell me I was going to cry when I came <laughs> up. 
happen. Bring your <laughs> tissue. <to> that <laughs> yeah, I need my tissue for sure. My Scotties. I, honestly, our parents um, are the only reason that we've been able to do what we've done. Um, without them, the sacrifices that they've made so that we can. <laughs> oh, there she is. <laughs> there I'm she is. Surprised. I was talking to them earlier. <laughs> There, come and sit on grandma's knee. Hi, honey. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> you didn't you tell me. me. <laughs> it's, it was a secret. Oh, <laughs> that's so nice. Thank we you. can do this on this show. And I want no <laughs> comments about my long hair. And and Colleen, Bella just said, Asha. are we related to her? Yes. <laughs> I claim that I do have a sister, Jennifer, so I'm not lying when I say that Jennifer Jones is my sister. Together, we've won 12. She might make it 13 soon. Um, our family's done know. well, Colleen. Our family's done well. You Hi, Carol. It's good to see you, Carol. I, I know you've got everything under control there. You're looking after the girls. How's everything going at the house there? Well, you know, it's been going pretty well. And after not seeing the kids for 11 months, which was a little hard for this grandma, um, I've been here now for a few weeks because I knew that Jen and Brent uh, would need a little bit of help because Jen's where she is. And then Brent's going where he's going. And, uh, and that kind of thing. And it's been pretty, pretty special for me, for sure. So considering the pandemic, I'm in a good place where I am. Mm -hmm. Did you guys make a sign? Did I see you grab a, a sign? Oh, let's do the sign. Well, uh, Skyla uh, just is dying to show mommy something. So if you don't mind, I'd like to show that to you. She made a monstrous poster. <laughs> And I don't know if you can read it or can yeah. you see it? We do. I love there you. It says, it says, I love you, mommy. Good luck in your, your game. game. With a big heart. <laughs> oh, God. And she signed it too, mommy, in the corner. Oh. Thanks. God. You didn't say I was going to cry. <laughs> Thank you, honey. I love it. Okay, and and Bella Bella also has something pretty spectacular. Let's see. So, um, can you hold it up a little higher? You so see you it? Do. Yep. You you are the best that you can be. Come and read it, honey. You try your best in everything you do, and that is why we love you so much. Oh. Oh, that's so and good. There, and to do hearts, oh, and signed, signed it, it, Bella. Bella, that's beautiful. Isabella. <laughs> Isabella, Thank beautiful. you, honey. Mommy loves it. Can you keep them so we can keep them at home? Yes. Yeah, can you come around here, honey, so mommy can see you, okay? There you go. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, sweetheart. I really appreciate it. Do you guys missing being at the Scotties? Mm -hmm. And you know what? This is the first Scotties ever that I've missed. I bet. Same. I bet. And all of them, like this is 16. My parents were at every one of them. They never missed one. Not and, even. And uh, I'm not just even a little, the hot shots. My yeah. parents were at, they came for like the entire time. At, we had to, we had to make plans shots. to leave on the Wednesday or the Thursday. So we'd be there for the hot shots. And the, the, right. So, yeah. Um, Carol, what, yes. makes, what makes Jennifer so special? Uh, actually, people have asked me that before about how, how proud you must be of her. And I I mean, that just goes second nature as a mom. Um, she's, I'm so proud of her accomplishments in curling and in her professional career as well. But I'm most proud of the person that she has become. That's, she's a very kind, generous, I'm going to get weepy and it's all your fault. <laughs> Nice. So um, I, I don't know what makes it, Colleen, but I think ever since she was little, uh, she has been driven, if you want to call it that. She um, wanted to achieve well in school, which she did. Uh, she got interested in curling uh, through osmosis, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and she knew, I think, when she started to curl as a junior, she knew what things look like in the future. And back then there was no Olympics. It was just, you know, maybe you'll get a chance to go to the Scotties. Wouldn't that be awesome? 
and she did, and then she did again, and a few other times. So, so. <laughs> and then we got to go to the Olympics, and believe me, strictly icing on the cake. Yeah. Unbelievable experience. Yeah. So. Isn't that great? For all of us. I mean, I feel lucky to have been able to go with her and her team. And I feel especially lucky that my husband was able to be there as well. Yeah, so. no kidding. Yeah. Well, oh, we're so happy you all joined us. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, you know what's really funny, Colleen, is literally five minutes ago or 10 minutes ago, before Jen went to this, she phoned the kids to their nightly call to say goodnight and so on. And, they didn't and I tell said, me. this is just... This is a surprise, girls. Okay, good night, Manu. Have a good night. <laughs> good job, Isabella. Good job. Even Skyla. She play. usually can't keep a secret the little. Yeah. Well, I thought Skyla would for sure say, Mommy, I made this sign for you. Uh, <laughs> so, awesome. you anyway, good job. Well, I feel kind of uh, special in, in the sense I feel I'm with royalty, number one, my Jen, um, but also Colleen. You're a Curling oh. legend, and I've always been um, appreciative of your talents as well. And then Devin, who writes about curling, and he does it the very best of anybody I've ever seen. Uh, and his mom's name is Jennifer, so I feel like we're related. <laughs> what a family! What a family! <laughs> um, Jennifer, we'd ask to go to the game tomorrow, but now we don't even care. This is just, <laughs> just going to say good night. Yeah. Do you know what the best part? Do you know what the best part about all of this is? Is like everybody will always ask me how it is to leave the kids, and absolutely, it's hard to leave your kids as a mom. Like I, I miss them terribly. But Bella, what 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 do you always tell me? What has this shown you, hun? She was going to. Come here. Honey. She always so says that she here. believes because she's watched me do this that if she tries really hard, she can. Oh. Stubbed her toe. It's okay. Daddy's coming together. Yeah. Don't worry about her, Jennifer. Okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> And, um, I, and Jennifer, you know what? As a mom who had two, I love that one. Yeah, no, she's no. It's a She'll be fine. Building resilience right here. But as a mom with two boys who did exactly what you did, I'll tell you, for them to see a strong woman out there living her dream allows them to have dreams too. So yeah, I, well, I you know what? And I'm, I'm going to just add a little story. Um, Bella, she's eight in grade three, and she recently had to do a school assignment that involved speaking in front of her class or perhaps her school and talking about a subject. And she was talking about something really interesting, but how mommy has taught her never to be afraid of trying anything, never be afraid of failure, um, if you try, you're a hero anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's why she wrote this thing about, Mommy, you're the best of everything. Oh, so. wow. Beautiful. Wow. Uh, Carol, if Jennifer remembers those words for the rest of the week, uh, Jennifer nope. will be there on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Well, advice from Isabella. Yeah, yeah you bet. You yeah. bet. You bet. So nice it's to be with It's great to see all of you. Yeah. Well, Thank I wish we were in that. person, but <laughs> yeah. one day, one day in the future, maybe we can do it again. So one yeah, we will. Thanks, Thanks guys. Great. Love you guys. Jennifer, Thanks, guys. Love you guys. Bye. 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 Have a good night, hun. Bye. And we'll talk Thanks, to you. Guys. Oh, they're so cute. Okay. Those kids. Bye -bye. So cute. Whew. I know that was so nice. Beautiful. Jennifer's uh, mom's pearls of wisdom and the kids. Well, you, along you, with it too. You, you look at any champions, right? And, and you can see how much uh, support they get from the parents. The parents. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We're going to keep things going. Mm -hmm. um, we still have a lot to get to. And there's a huge game tonight that I know everyone's excited about. We're going to get Jill McCusker to break it down for us. Yeah. Uh, Alberta and Ontario. That's going to be a beauty. But of course, we're bringing fans in every mm -hmm. single night. And we've been keeping somebody up. That's why we got yeah. it going, <laughs> Colleen. We're going to bring in Zach. This is an awesome story. Mm -hmm. Zach reached out to you and I. He uh, is originally from Peterborough, not far from where I am in Toronto. But Zach's in Wales, in the UK. <laughs> It's Monday morning. There he is the other night watching the show opener, a huge curling fan, and he's also a curler. And guess what? We have him right now joining mm -hmm. us Monday morning in Wales. Yeah. Zach, good yeah. morning to you. Good to see you. Well, I don't know how I was supposed to follow that. 
Yeah, I, oh, I know with Jennifer and Carol. You know what? It's so nice to get to know um, Jennifer in this way, though, isn't it? I mean, because her family is everything to her. So it was nice to get that behind the scenes look. But Zachary, what I loved about you over there in Wales was that when you wrote how that curling show is helping you connect back to Canada, and then you started watching the games again, and it made you feel like home. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I think every curling fan, every curler is itching to get back on the ice. And I left Canada in early December and haven't touched ice since March. So um, it's just something that you absolutely miss. Um, I was watching the Swiss elite finals and my French isn't very good and my German's even worse. So <laughs> didn't understand. Um, much of what they were saying at all, but it's just, it's a curling family. And uh, just to be able to uh, connect through um, this pregame show and then uh, into the uh, Game. ice rink is just something that I don't think you experience in any other sport. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And Zachary's going to law school, by the way, over in Wales, so that's pretty. Yeah, I'm guessing you have cereal bowls of coffee over there, Zach, keeping you away. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I had, uh, I definitely had a few uh, coffees before uh, yeah. while I was staying up, but uh, that uh, PEI Quebec game sure, uh, sure yeah. kept me up there uh, for the yeah. most part. Yeah. Now, listen, our question of the day to fans on Twitter um, and all of the different platforms was, um, what was your favorite Sandra Schmiller uh, moment? And I know you weren't born when Sandra Schmuller heyday, but I know you know of her, so. Yeah, the uh, the 1997 final was definitely uh, one of my favorite games that I've ever watched. Just the Sandra Schmuller smile, mm -hmm. you know, the excitement in uh, Sandra Schmuller is something that isn't, I, I mean, it's around in today's game, but there's mm -hmm. a lot, uh, looking at the curlers of today, you hardly see the smile that Sandra had. Yeah. Um, and playing against Alison Goring, who actually, to get to the 97 Scotties, came through Peterborough, which wow. is uh, right uh, right beside Ennis Moore, where I'm lucky enough to curl. And so the entire game was just something that I rewatch and I rewatch because that, um, like I watch old games all of the time mm -hmm. uh, with the new games and yeah. definitely Sandra Schmerler, Marilyn Bodo, uh, Colleen Jones <laughs> <laughs> are uh, definitely names that come up all the time. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, who had personality? I mean, uh, coming out of her ears, out of everywhere. Like just, I miss that kind of an excitement of a player. Yeah. Uh, one had it for sure, that kind of, uh, real energy, but definitely you could always see Sandra Schmuller's pure joy of being on the ice. So exactly. But listen, you Sarah. need to bed in Wales. No, you're see he's staying up all night. He's he's getting ready for the big game tonight, Alberta and Ontario. I was gonna yeah. say yeah, you're not missing that. But no. we're so happy you found that curling yeah. show. Yeah, thank you for coming on the show. It's great to connect with you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. All right. We'll talk to you soon. That's Zach. Awesome. Uh, listen, it was 1997. Uh, that was Sandra's last Scotty's win. Uh, gone far too soon. Dominant throughout the 90s. Uh, winning those titles. That smile. There it is. Mm -hmm. um, and Jan Becker and Jill McCusker. We'll talk to Joan later in the show. But, uh, you know, just such a profound loss. Uh, like I said, gone too soon. Uh, but on this Sandra Schmirler day, this is really exciting. Our next guest joining us from Regina, and we've got Sandra's daughter, Sarah mm -hmm. England, joining us from the house in Regina. Hello. There, Sarah. how are you? Hi, Sarah? Nice to Hi see how you. are you? Nice to see you finally. <laughs> finally, I know we kept you waiting a bit. Thanks for hanging in there. <laughs> no, of course. I'm sure you've been busy. You've been answering the phone. Who's at the house today? What's going on? Yeah, there. it's been a buzz over here. Yeah, we've been answering phones, Jen and I, all day. I'm set up out in the office space, and she's set up in her room. And yeah, we've got to talk to a lot of people with a lot of generous donations, and it's 
we're going to get to that mark, I think. And it's just been a really exciting day around the house. Yeah. Hashtag champions start small and they can go to mm -hmm. send uh, org. Correct. Yeah. Or they can call the number and one of our lovely volunteers will pick up the phone for them. Mm. I know for Sandra, of course, um, her daughters were her greatest legacy. But tell me about this legacy of the Sandra Schmiller Foundation. I mean, it blows my mind, the reach mm -hmm. of it and how many people it's helped. It's kind of hard to put into words when the, well, it's been 20 years and I'm only 23 and my sister's 21. So we didn't, when it started, we obviously had no idea what this foundation was. And even growing up with it, we didn't know the capacity of what it really was until we really got involved in 2015. And we got to go into a couple hospitals throughout the years and like see the equipment. Um, my sister got to meet a family that was in the neonatal center. And it's just, it's quite remarkable how far we've come and how far the foundation has come. And it keeps pushing this year. We're going to hit another huge milestone and it's just exciting to be a part of and so proud to be up, um, be representing the family with it and we'll be working with the foundation as long as we can. Sarah, you and I had a conversation just a, a couple of days ago. You're mm -hmm. an ambassador now. So is your sister, Jenna. Um, you learn so much about your mom through all of this, don't you? Yes. What, what, yeah. what, tell me about some of the stories and, and, and what people tell you when they talk about your mom. Well, like the biggest thing we always say is since we were so little when she did pass away, the best way and the only way we've gotten to know who she was, was is through everyone and telling us stories. And, and the biggest thing and the common denominator with everyone is how much they just adored her and respected her and loved her and the joy she brought to the ice and to the people around her. I think that's what almost in every story I've ever heard. And there's always a couple of funny ones that are thrown in there and, a big one, like when I was little, I would have been a baby in uh, Brandon when she won the trials. Uh, I guess there was, yeah, there's the photo. Yep, there it is. <laughs> and, we were ready, yeah, Sarah. I was very small, <laughs> but I would be, uh, the joke kind of was a lot of people will tell me I was passed around from fan to fan to hold. And so, and I've met some of the fans who've actually held me when I was that little. So wow. it's just been great to just connect with people across the country who knew my mom so well. Yeah. And everybody talks about her smile. And what I found yeah. with Sandra having played against her was her generosity of spirit. And when I won in 99, I called her to get advice about yeah. what can we prepare. And she just freely gave all the advice, no holding back. I don't know if a champion, whoever wins this year could call last year's champion or the champion before to say, mm -hmm. tell me what I can expect. And I just have to show you that one year I did win the Sandra Schmirler. Nice. <laughs> nice. Honestly, it's the only one I keep on my mantle because wow. oh, so Sandra sweet. changed the game in a way nobody else did. Um, mm -hmm. She was just... Um, she was just everything to, especially my my generation. I hope ever, and she remains top of mind for everybody, all the time for the, what she gave to the sport and the energy and love she had on the ice. And well, so, I think it's oh, oh sorry, you I, go. I'm just gonna jump in and Sarah, you're curling. You're, <laughs> no, um, well, even just with like beautiful. my generation with the foundation with the like the Sandra Schmerler scholars, like that's a huge aspect of the foundation to share the legacy of my mom with people in my generation and keeping her memory alive. I think that's one of a great point, uh, part of the foundation. Sure is. And, and sorry, I jumped in because you, you, you're, you're <laughs> curling as well. You, you've been out yeah. there as well. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm in, well, this would have been my second year of women's. Um, I'm playing third for Michelle Inglot, uh, which when we put together this team a year ago, I was talking with my dad and I was aging out of juniors and I just said, I want to play for someone with experience and I want to learn. I think I'm in a great area where I can just want to absorb as much information as I can to hopefully be skipping one day at the Scotties. And Michelle just took the year off before and my dad and her have talked before and he just kind of pushed that idea on me. I shoot her a message and within like a day we had a team together because she was just itching to play. And I've learned so much from her and I, even feel closer with her because she played against my mom for many years and they're around the same age. And if I can't play with my mom, Michelle is 
a great choice in Saskatchewan here. So yeah. I am very happy where I am and I'm really excited to get back out on the ice hopefully next year and see where it can take me. Listen, we're getting on that ice next year, okay? Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> 20 years of this, so I mm -hmm. can't believe it's been been that long. So what an amazing legacy the Schmiller Foundation has, is leaving for everybody. It Sarah, really is. Sarah, send our best to everybody at the house. Who's who's in the house tonight? I think I think Sandra's mom, Shirley, is there. Yep, she's yep. here for a little bit longer. My sister and my dad right now. Nice. Send our yeah. best to everyone. Oh, for sure. And for thank sure. you for being on the show tonight. Of course. It was great talking to you guys. Oh, but watch these highlights. Oh, yeah. Stick around. <laughs> stick around. Okay. Because, I will. You know, we talk about all the great games. We're, we're going to bring in the video right now. We talk about all the great games. Uh, Three-time Scotty champion, world champion. And then it all led to that 1998 Olympic gold. Let's take a look at some of the greatest memories. And Colleen, I think you make a couple of appearances. <laughs> Let's watch. The one shot she wants to play. Not what you and I expect to play. She feels a lot more confident in this one than any other shot. She needs a slight roll into the ring. Is that a good looking shot? this team what makes it work i think the humor and the, the the friendship that we have with this team is incredible and i'm just so proud of them they just played so great ahead of me i, I just can't believe it no. and you can tell by the look on sandra's yeah. face that she knows this one is on target and it's all ahead for you. You go to the world, then you go to the Olympic trials in Brandon, then you go back to the Scott, you might go to the Olympics, you're having a baby. You're not going to have time, kiddo, for a life. <laughs> but anyhow, congratulations. You're such a terrific champion. Thanks so much. Thanks, Colleen. It's time for the Golden Handshake, and the Karyazawa Park Arena erupts in a Canadian gold medal celebration. They came into this competition as the gold medal favorites, and they will head for home with that cherished Olympic medal hanging from their necks. Woo! Joni! Joan. <laughs> How was that yeah. for you? I'm crying. <laughs> it's been quite the show for you guys, okay? Like, you first you get me crying with Jennifer and Carol, and then, you know, mm -hmm. you've got uh, such a well-spoken Sarah representing the foundation and looking so much like her mom. And then you show all that. Uh, I, I can't. Are you trying to make me cry? What's going on? Oh, that was beautiful to see. And was that not shot, the shot to win the Canadian Olympic trials to go to, I mean, that, that was, whoa. Yeah. 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 The, uh, it's, it, it's a fun time of year for us. So we can, uh, all these highlights, we can kind of relive those moments. Cause as you know, Colleen, when you're in it, you mm -hmm. know, you, you, you don't have any kind of perspective at all. You're just trying to win a game and make a shot and stay in the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. All of these years later, though, every time that we get to, to see those things again, it, it, it absolutely brings everything back. So yeah. uh, it's fun. It's fun to see those shots. You know, Joan, because I was there covering it with you, and I think I was in Switzerland with you guys, too, and you kind of saw the camaraderie between the 
four of you all the time and that you kind of all were from Saskatchewan and all at the same curling club. And we will never see that again, will we? Yet that formed your chemistry, that unity of always being with each other. But in today's curling world, that just doesn't happen. There'd be an import that you only see it spiels. Well, it, it, it was a different time, Colleen, too, that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that we didn't go outside of your area. You weren't allowed to curl mm -hmm. with people outside of your club. Remember that, too. So, mm -hmm. you know, that that forging of a, of a friendship uh, here in Saskatchewan is, is who we are. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we're sparsely populated and we we you get to know your neighbor and you're friendly and you're competitive. We like to play our sports here in Saskatchewan. And I think we were all raised the same way. And that was that that relationship between the four of us was actually number one. Uh, we were friends first. We had a barrel of laughs. We built that kind of that base of trust that you could get upset and get competitive and get angry and and then help each other up again. Um, I don't know, like you, you have to have those same goals and that same kind of commitment and we were really fortunate that, that the four of us had that and were able to to carry that through all of our years together. Mm. Well, I can't remember which year you won the Scotties um, that we were all sort of gathered around your table looking at your jewelry and just wishing we were all you guys. Uh, but you were all so excited to see the other curlers too. Like you were so sharing of your time at that great championship banquet. Like I, you guys would just be loved, just so you know. Oh, you're so sweet. We love you too there, Colin. But, yeah. And I think that's the thing about the curling season this year with COVID is the inability to connect. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the curling community is uh, very tight. Uh, we, we have a lot of things in common in this inability to, to share a story, to sit down with other people from across the country is what all of us miss the most. Yeah. I'm going to jump in because this is a dream for me. And Joan, I've told you about this every time we get to be on a, on a screen together or get to broadcast together because I'm missing home so damn much. I've got my Saskatchewan colors on tonight, but you're also making me so proud to be from our province. Um, there's a picture I think we have of us, of, of the three of us uh, in Pyeongchang all together. There it is with Bruce Rainey and Mike Harris. Um, but Joan, let me let me say that you really are heroes. You're heroes back home. I remember growing up in Saskatchewan and watching, and, and you hear that all across our province. Um, I mean, look at these pictures. But you, I think we have another one of you guys coming home. And you've all got the babies, Joan. You guys planned having babies uh, <laughs> around the curling season. I mean, you guys got this down to a T. You know what's really funny, uh, Devin, is uh, that's uh, that's what Rachel Holman is doing right now, right? Yeah. She nailed down that uh, trial spot and off went to multiply, and, and that's exactly <laughs> what our team did. We, we had that early trial spot, and we were at that point in our life that we felt like we had put off this important thing called family for too long, and uh, off we went to have children with no regard to how that uh, those due dates might affect our future curling. And uh, it's funny to see that see Rachel Holman do that as well, because, you know, there was a long time ago that people said that women couldn't have a family and play sport, that you had to choose and you were made to feel very guilty about that. And mm. that's not the way it is anymore. And it shouldn't be that way anymore, that you can you can do both. And it is very difficult. We saw Jennifer there with her with her mom, Carol, you need that help to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had it. We had that help mm -hmm. in our husbands and our, our parents and our sisters and brothers. And uh, boy, oh boy, at the time we thought, this is crazy. What are we doing? And, you know, maybe this is a mistake. And years later, right, you know, here we are 20 some years later that I can, I can tell you it's not a mistake. And maybe yeah. we can be role models to these young women to say, go ahead, keep curling. Keep showing yeah. these kids that you're strong women and it's okay to be competitive and it's okay to go chase your dreams. How yeah. about how about this photo from last year's uh, Scotty yeah. to Musso? What a moment that was. The band back together with, with Sarah, Joan. That was such a special moment. It was amazing. That was, we, we threw the, the opening rock of the briar here 
and nobody knew we were going to do that. And, and Sarah came in to, to throw Last Rock to be Sandra. And I got to tell you, that was a deja vu, deja vu moment walking into that arena. It was just like when we had come back in 98 to play in the Scotties in 98 in Regina here and uh, walking into the same end of the arena. And we had our parents up in one of the boxes and they were waving at us. Ew, wow, that was amazing nice. for us. Nice. Kind of a throwback to that same feeling of pride. Yeah. Listen, when you look at this year's Scotties, um, what are you thinking? Who who do you like? And and you're also coaching. Um, Shiger, Shiger. Yeah. So, you know, there's a team that didn't get to be here, even though they're probably one of the top teams in the country. So tell me about what you're thinking when you're watching the 18 team field. Well, it's, it is an interesting format, isn't it? I'm, I'm a big fan of bringing in uh, the wild cards, uh, whether that's two or three, I think that's fantastic. We need the best teams in Canada so that we can get our best rep. Uh, yes, it was hard for Shy Digger and it's, it's still hard for, Casey Scheidegger and the girls to watch from afar, um, thinking that they they could have been there. They were very close to this cutoff point. And depending on which list that you used uh, to find those top 18, they, they were kind of on the bubble there. So that was difficult because uh, there was a chance that I could have been there coaching as well with, with Casey Scheidegger's team. Uh, what I think is that it's very difficult for those 18 teams that are there. What, you know, what... Uh, what a, a unique situation and how difficult is that that for yeah. the number of days that you can't even mix with your own team that you mm -hmm. stay in your own hotel room until you get through so many covid tests mm -hmm. that would be the the part that would be the most different for me uh and for any team that i've ever been involved in that you don't spend a whole bunch of time with those those women after every game and hashing it out and just having fun and and trying to relax in between the, the draws. I think that's the biggest change and the, the, the lack of fans in the stands would, <laughs> would be after a little while, you might forget that how important this event is because there's nobody right. there. Like right. it, it's exciting right now because nobody's played for so long, but you know, in the middle when you're getting tired and, and there's nobody there and it's dead quiet, um, that, that might be a little weird too. Yeah. Uh, the, the other factor that I'm, I'm waiting for in this format is uh, it's a lot of games and yeah. a lot of games that you cannot prepare for as a sweeper. Really, we all know there, there's nothing you can do to train those muscles to sweep mm -hmm. under that pressure and with that much adrenaline. So fatigue is going to be a factor. So who will the fatigue affect as we get into that championship pool, that's the the big question mark. And you know, and I'm like everybody else, I just can't wait to watch to see what's going to Can can we put up the pools and get Joan to break them down? We had sure. Ben Heebs on. I don't know if you saw Ben. He was on fire last night, Joan. Let's put up the pools here and just look over them because we've got this big game tonight between Alberta and Ontario. Any thoughts on that, Joan, going into tonight? Well, I, I think that uh, definitely you're getting these, the, the cream of the crop, right? The teams that are playing really, really well are, are going to start to play against each other. And and Ontario looks fantastic, right? Despite the mm -hmm. fact that Rachel is almost eight months pregnant, mm -hmm. she is making a ton. And, uh, and certainly Laura Walker coming back from having her baby and getting that little confidence, making a ton of shots is uh, they're rolling too. I think tonight's game really is going to be a debt it come down to a battle of the thirds, uh, a battle of the seconds, you know, like all of those tiny differences in this team, you know, MMSQ is, is very, very good. And can Kate camera Cameron keep up with her, you know, in those kind of shot making and, uh, and uh, see what happens, what, what they'll leave their skips. So yes, I'm, I'm excited to see two of the big names uh, go tonight. Mm -hmm. That'll be yeah, I can't wait to see how Kate Cameron, I, I love her as a thrower, so I can't wait to see how she uh, performs, because with each game, the pressure rises. No so, she's, she's very, oh, go very ahead. Good. Yeah. I think go ahead. Kate and, uh, and Emma will match up very well, right? It's that, that one shot somewhere uh, that'll make the difference. Yeah. Awesome. Joan, nice to see you, former roommate. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's that's true. Hey, like this uh, yeah. lack of travel is uh, it's yeah. just not good for us. In this Gosh, Korea, country. guys, it feels like forever ago. It does. It does. Can't wait to see you again soon, Joan. Say hi to everybody back home for me. I certainly will, Devin, and keep up the fantastic work. What a great show you guys have going. And, uh, uh, you guys are so a nice. Week. Thank yeah. you, Joan. Good to see you. Take care. That is going to wrap it up because we're 15 minutes away, Colleen, from this massive battle tonight, the feature game, Homan versus Walker. Any last thoughts on that? I just think we're already getting to the point in the week where games are becoming must wins, especially for those teams that are at two losses going into tonight and tomorrow morning and three losses. Because by the time you cross over into the championship right. pool, you don't want to get in there with three losses already. Colleen, your internet was perfect tonight. Do you think? Yeah, uh, you, you look great. You look great. We made it. We got it. We did it. In the back of that jacket. Yeah. Oh, so nice. Sandra Schmurler Foundation. Check out the website. Uh, don't forget hashtag Champions Start Small. What an incredible legacy and incredible work that foundation does. So, no kidding. so honored to have the family on tonight. We'll see you tomorrow night, curling fans. Good night. We're we gonna do this Good again. Girl. We're doing it all week. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna do it. That's a wrap. Enjoy the game tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. Take yeah. care. Good luck. Thanks, producer Sophie. Thank you to Sophie. Bye.